Electron Energy by Rene K. October 1, 2023. The Pleiarans and Billy Meyer have talked several times about electron energy, a source of energy that is completely clean, non polluting, and unlimited. In the 238th Contact Report, which occurred on Saturday, 18th May 1991, at Orzo 55HRs, hrs Ptah explains that the entirety of universal space is not empty as lay people often assume, but is actually stuffed to the brim with electrons. He comments that the scientists of Earth have, as of 1991, known of this for a very long time. Ptah then goes to say that the ancestors of the Pleiarans discovered the principle of electron energy, which is present and available absolutely everywhere, even within life forms, and is absolutely inexhaustible. He states that the Pleiarans make use of electron energy in all kinds of devices, machinery, etc. today, as their ancestors have for a very, very long time. Contact Report 238, Saturday, 18th May, 1991, Z055 HRs. If I answer your last question first, then the answer is yes. Because here, too, there is no longer a secret on Earth, because we have been providing relevant scientists with corresponding impulses for quite some time. The answer to the questions of energies and engines is this. Electron drives or electron pulse drives. The entire universal space is piled up through and through with electrons. So the space is not simply empty, as the layperson mistakenly thinks, but what is also known to earthly scientists for a very long time. However, electrons do not only exist in one kind or form, but in very diverse forms. However, I am not yet allowed to give further information or explain details about this, nor with regard to the 280 universally existing elements, of which only about 100 are known to Earth scientists. To answer your question, however, I would like to explain to you that our ancestors discovered the principle of electron energy which is present on all planets and stars as well as in all forms of life, as well as in inexhaustible form in the entire universe. We make use of these electron energies even today, just as our early and later ancestors did, only that we make energy transformations and are incomparably advanced in the use of these energies and their application, as well as in the technology required for them, than our ancestors were. Tachyon drives as well as ray drives and antimatter drives, and our newest means of transportation with transmitters are based on electron energy, which we have been using for many millennia in ever more perfected form. Also, the cosmic electromagnetic life energy from which any form of life lives is a product of the never-exhaustible electron energy of the universe. Also, any form of existence, no matter what kind, lives from it, even the spirit forms, even if their energy is infinitely finer. So, if scientists here on Earth have known of the countless electrons of all space for a very long time, what does this refer to? In the field of physics, specifically under the interconnected domains of quantum mechanics and electrodynamics, it is well known, and has been since the early part of the 20th century, that all of space throughout the entirety of the universe is filled with a background electromagnetic field. This field is known as the quantum electrodynamic vacuum, Let's break that down, as the name alone provides a good base of knowledge. One quantum refers to the fact that this field is made of discrete and indivisible units of energy. That is to say quanta, and exists at the energy level of these quanta. 
In comparison, ordinary atmospheric gas interacts primarily on time scales and distances far removed from the utterly tiny quanta. From this alone we know that this is a fundamental field and cannot be exhausted or removed as quanta form the smallest indivisible units of all matter and energy. It must be noted that tachyons provide a means to describe and even mathematically work with quanta and quantum fields. Put another way, quantum mechanics is really the start of tachyon mechanics. 2. Electrodynamic simply refers to a phenomena or object which interacts electromagnetically in a dynamic, non-static way. 3. Vacuum means that this is the kind of vacuum that remains when all matter and more familiar kinds of energy are removed. As Batar pointed out, space is not in fact empty. Scientists familiar with this field are well aware of this truth. In fact, in 1955, the famous scientist John Wheeler an expert in this area of science, gave this energy field the name quantum foam. From Wikipedia. Quantum foam or space-time foam is a theoretical quantum fluctuation of space-time on very small scales due to quantum mechanics. The theory predicts that at these small scales, particles of matter and antimatter are constantly created and destroyed. These subatomic objects are called virtual particles. The idea was devised by John Wheeler in 1955. The primary component of the quantum electrodynamic vacuum, or quantum foam, at least that we can interact with, is electrons. This is probably why the Pleiarans refer to this energy field as electron energy. In 1980, David H. Froning, who also later become aware of the Pleiarans, published a paper about a quantum vacuum ramjet. Froning realised that the energy of the quantum vacuum could be used to power starships. According to his intentionally conservative mathematics, a quantum vacuum energy-powered starship could reach the speed of light in as little as four hours. To put this in proper perspective, so that we can at least try to think about and comprehend what this truly means, consider that the speed of light is so incredibly fast that switching on a lamp seems to instantaneously fill a room or even a large stadium with light. At the tremendous speed of light, it takes a mere 2.82 seconds to reach the moon at its average distance, despite this value equaling 384,400 kilometers, as measured from the Earth's center of mass. This same colossal speed can be reached using quantum vacuum energy in only four hours. That's no small feat that it is possible, even if only on paper at present, should be awe-inspiring on its own. For the better part of a century, a debate has raged over whether or not this immense energy could actually be used for work, or if it, though very real, could never actually be used in practice. If the idea that energy can exist but never be used may seem strange, but it has precedence. After all, gravitational waves, neutrinos, and other particles of energy and even matter fly through us, and the entire planet all the time, yet for the most part cannot be used for work purposes, to power machines, etc., because of the near intangibility of these forms of energy. Of course, those of us who read the Billy Meyer contacts and take the words transcribed in them seriously know that this particular kind of energy is indeed harnessable.
However, some here on earth took this hard, and have argued incessantly that quantum vacuum energy is like mechanical perpetual motion machines. That is to say, machines that somehow run without any input of energy. Impossible even in theory. In contrast, others argued that when considering negative energy states and information flow, a device could potentially extract useful work from the energy of the vacuum. Lacking experimental evidence either way, the debate had turned into a stalemate. Her on what further hampered any efforts to settle this is that modern science puts greater value on theoretical explanation than on experimental evidence, especially if that evidence is anything less than absolutely ironclad. It is ironic that one of the cornerstones of the modern theory of thermodynamics, the Carnot cycle, a theoretical maximal efficient heat engine which all other engines' power sources can be compared to, was in fact only developed after the first steam engines were built, as a theory to explain their function. That particular situation and other similar situations has been typical for millennia. Tinkerers would make new things, and then philosophers would try, often failing, to put together a theoretical explanation. Both are needed. Without the philosophers, that is to say the theorists, and their models of the world, progress would be halting, erratic, and often unrepeatable. Without the tinkerers, that is to say the experimentalists, and their unexpected breakthroughs, progress is slow, difficult, and tends to stagnate. Today things have swung to the philosophers, but we must not forget the tinkerers and their seemingly crazy, mad, or incomprehensible, but often groundbreaking efforts. However, though most do not realise it yet, this is really a past problem now as a new development has completely changed the picture. In 2021, Professor Garrett Model of the University of Colorado at Boulder, USA, lead a small team which designed and built a device which produced a small electrical current from the quantum vacuum energy. Garrett Model and his team have since built thousands of devices successfully and repeatedly producing electrical power with them. Each device is only a few hundred nanometers in size, but built up as an array should produce electrical current at a density of between 70 and 280 watts per square meter. These numbers are directly from Garrett Model and his team via their publications and are extrapolated from the devices they have built. Considering that each device is less than a micron thick, or only few microns thick, the watts per cubic meter should prove even greater. Model and his team are continuing to refine their devices even now and working towards making them scalable. Unfortunately, the scientific community has snubbed quantum vacuum energy and has had no reaction at all, none, to Model's devices. They have completely and foolishly ignored his and his team's groundbreaking discovery entirely. Their loss Nevertheless, scaling up these devices and making them marketable are surmountable problems. Given the size, we are looking at a future, a near future, where every device, every machine, every vehicle is entirely self-powering, requiring no fuel, 
No power cables. No emissions. No sound. No pollution. As these devices are manufactured using the exact same tried and tested techniques used to manufacture microchips, scaling up and mass producing these power devices, both as self contained units and as energy chips that can be integrated into other devices and machinery, should be relatively easily done and quite inexpensive. Garrett Models page on the University of Colorado Boulder website HTTPS Watch www Colorado Edu Faculty Model It would seem that humanity has finally achieved electron energy an energy source that can let us start cleaning our polluted and damaged world and to then spread out into galactic space. I'll close with an excerpt from Contact Report 238, the same contact report we opened with. Contact Report 238, Saturday, 18th May, 1991, 055 chairs. But you should have thought of that, my friend, because with the word electron energy, and with the word electron swinging waves, some spotlights came up in a flash, which illuminated certain dark caves and abysses within me. And if I now continue to think about it, then some spotlights will come up again, which will illuminate other dark points for me, such as the fact that on Earth electron power plants would have to be built instead of lousy nuclear power plants, and that medical scientists would also have to get behind the problem of electron medicine because through certain electronic influences, etc., not only any disease will be cured, but life can also be prolonged for centuries. Together with the Salubritason, it should be possible to reach the same Methuselah age as you. Apart from that, these energies would also be able to cope with the enormous environmental pollution, because then no more diesel and petrol coaches would pollute the earthly atmosphere because electron drive vehicles on land and air would become a matter of course. If Earth scientists are clever enough to really fathom this inexhaustible source of energy and make it usable for humans, then all the problems of pollution would be solved. All kinds of factories and productions would be operated and carried out only by the application of electron energy, and even necessary insecticides and herbicides, etc., could be replaced by means of electron energetic form, etc., and so on. You are unbelievable because you say everything that is customary in our country. So it could soon be on the earth. At least the biggest evils could soon be fixed if our scientists are able to trace them. Also, many useful innovations for the overall well-being of the planet and for all life forms could be created in a short time. Moreover, electrons are practically inexhaustible and present everywhere and in everything and everyone in innumerable form. And if these are made usable by the Earth human, then also the dark period of the technical abuse and the false teachings of religions and sects should be over. But unfortunately, this will still take some time, because according to your statements, this will still last for almost 800 years, before it will be so far along that reason and true progress into the better future begins.